We are getting homework today. I kind of want to do that. Uh, we do later this week. Uh, you'll have some time today to work on it, some time tomorrow to work on it. So uh, I don't know about Wednesday. When is the early out day? Um, so unless they get rid of those. So we'll see. We'll see kind of what, is, uh, what we have. Uh, but let's go through a quick review here of the actual section. Uh, we're in 10-3. This is going to be one of the last days we go through the notes on it. Uh, we're kind of approaching the midpoint through the chapter here. Um, that's where it really kind of takes a turn. The next section is very close to this one, but uh, you'll start to see like the promise change, like not difficulty, but what they're going to ask you to do. Like We're going from a lot of algebra to the next part is remembering a lot of different formulas. Um, we haven't had a lot of formulas as of right now. You know, we've done some review of like Pythagorean theorem and just some little things, but the, the next couple sections, they have a lot more like this formula works for this picture, which is very different than what we're doing here. So uh, we'll kind of, uh, hopefully that'll make a little more sense once we get there. But yeah, it changes It changes after this, this section. All right. Um, goal state, I want to do a quick review of these theorems. Uh, these are the two new ones we got on Friday. Um, I think I posted them online. I think they're online uh, as of this morning, so you can kind of see those if you need to. Um, and I have the PowerPoint there and everything. Uh, but I want to do a quick review, and then once we're through this, maybe do an example of a homework problem for like each type as we go. I kind of did that on Friday. I did, I think, an example of like the first two. Uh, but the goal today is to show you some different examples that we can work with it. Um, I know Pythagorean theorem is used a lot today. So uh, in the homework, there's like, uh, geez, what is there? Three, three or four different problems that use it. So it's it's probably the most prevalent like thing that we're gonna need to know how to do. Uh, that's when we get to this next one. And then the later the later problems are just, do you know how to set certain things equal? It's pretty easy. A lot of algebra one, not set ways of doing it. So there's there's kind of it's kind of open ended, but I'll kind of show you that as we go. Uh, we are gonna get new homework today. Um, Technically, I have it due for Wednesday. I know there's a lot of stuff going on this week. This week is like the first full week of like spring activities where everything is going on. Um, there's what, golf, track, soccer, there's everything in the world is happening this week. I think there's four soccer matches for boys. There's tons of stuff, so there's lots of stuff. So uh, that that's a tentative date. I just have it. I just put Wednesday because I didn't know what day I'm going to have it due yet. Uh, but just kind of keep that in mind. Do at some point this week. I'll tell you. I'll kind of narrow it down once we get going today. Um, okay, this is the first thing we had. I think it was last Thursday on that um, that um, that late start day. Uh, same circle of congruent circles. So we get two pictures. Uh, two arcs are equal. The, uh, the actual arcs if their chords are the same. So this is the picture. Now, what I wanted to talk about today was like a homework style problem, what they could do, uh, or what they would ask you for. So uh, one of the problems I know for sure is they did something like this. This is one, I think it did very, something very, very similar on, something very, very similar on, what day was that? Uh, Friday, in a very, very close example of this. Something like that, okay? where if you look at the arc, uh, they have the same measure, the 50 degrees, that arc is the same. I don't know why, they always label the arcs with the angle on the outside. That 50 degrees is actually the in interior angles, this angle right here. It has nothing to do with these. The cords themselves are just lengths of sticks. The 50 does not apply to that. The only thing that you need to know is from this theorem, if the arcs are the same measure, then these sticks are the same length. So you could actually set those equal to each other. That's a one x, and then you could solve for x. Like that's what we could do, and then you could plug it back in. If like you solve for x, let's say I solve for x here, subtract the x across, I get one x. I subtract the eight across, I get eight. Then you could take the eight and plug it back in. You could do that, and I think these turn out to be what twenty four, so twenty four in length, whatever that. Maybe it's inches, feet, centimeters, whatever it is. Because again, you take the eight, plug it back into both things, and you do get 24. Questions on the first style of problem that they could ask you for, for that one. Okay, now, let me give you a different different type of problem. Um, there was one in the book that I really liked. I just liked the way that they had it drawn and what they asked you for. Um, it was a problem very similar to this. Um, let's see, it was something, 
Let me get rid of that picture. It was something like, okay, we had a circle, they had a center, um, and then they had, there was two chords, something like that. They said this was 200 degrees. This was 15 and 15. And the question was, you know, let's call this A, B, and D. The, the question was, find the measure of A to B. And the measure, putting that little ML front, meant the angle. And this, this, like, this is what they gave you. And you had to kind of like figure out, okay, what are they doing? What are they asking for? What are they looking? Um, they're looking for this angle right here, like in degrees, what that thing is. Well, the way that you had to do it was using this theorem. This theorem stated that if, if the chords are the same or the arcs are the same, they're kind of hand-hand. -hand. Well, on this one, you can definitely see that the chords are the same length, correct? So if the chords are the same, then these arcs have to be the same. So this arc right here, A to D, is actually equal to that one because the chords are the same. Well, now you can figure it out because what does a full circle have to make? 360, right? So you can add the two X's together plus that 200 that's over here, and you can get 360 because the entire arcs add together to make 360 because that's your angle that's involved. Question? Um, I don't get how it's an angle. They, they always, I don't know why, and this is what we were talking about earlier, I don't know why, they always label the angles on the outside of the circle. So like what that X actually means is this thing right here. That's what they want, that angle on the inside. But they, they for some reason, they label on the outside so they don't have too many lines drawn. And it's just, that's how they label arcs, like the measures of them. Yeah, it's kind of a weird thing. But does that help you out? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I don't understand that either. Because uh, for me, like when I see that, I'm thinking like the actual distance. Like, yeah, it's, it's really weird how they just choose to label that. So, uh, but anyway, uh, we add the x's, add the 200. So if you subtract this across, you get 160, and that's two x's. And then you can divide them. What are, what are they both? 80, something like that. So that's the x. That's one. That problem is very, very close to what you have in your homework. Um, there's a couple other ones where. They give you all these arcs, like the actual angles, and then they want you to find these things. So just knowing, like, if the arcs are the same on the picture, then certain sticks would have to be the same one. So you could set certain ones equal and so. But that's really how difficult those problems get. Is there any questions on those? That was a good question earlier, though. Okay, we're good? All right, let's move on to the next ones. The later ones get harder, like more difficult. Uh, that was pretty easy. Just knowing the arcs are the same. Just get used to like that notation. That means like the measure. So read. So measure means angles. So I don't think they ever ask for arc length today. I don't think they do that. So okay. Um, moving on to the next one. This is ten three now. Uh, this this theorem talked about if you have a radius or diameter that intersects a chord at a ninety degree angle. So like you have a diameter or radius here. Uh, that's a radius. This is the diameter. If it's perpendicular 90 degrees to a chord, it splits the chord into two equal parts. That was the one that we did last Thursday as well. I think we even talked about it on Friday. So just having that 90 degrees automatically split the chord in half. So each part's the same. And the thing is that we talked about on Friday was that it also split these arcs into two equal parts. So arc X to B is the exact same length as Y to B. And the angles are the same as well. So if we did that weird thing where they label the outside with the angles, they would be the same angle as well. Question? So the angle is the Z basically, right? Oh, no. Um, if they talk about angles, so like make up a number, let's say 12. 12. Okay, 12 degrees. That would be this angle. Because um, the 12 degrees here goes always to the center. It's always the central angle that points at the arc itself. So... The 90 is where the Z is sitting. That's the 90 that sits there. Yeah, central angles are the same as the arc number they put on the arc itself. It has to be the center of the circle. Okay, so now the type of problem they could do, they could do something like, uh, they tell me that um, 
AV, um, the AV of the stick is, let's go with 16. Um, XY is a, let's say it's 5, and they want to know the length of C to Z. Maybe that's the question they ask for. This problem is significantly more challenging than the last ones. Because now it's very open-ended what they're asking for. You have to put a lot of things together. As opposed to the last ones, you can kind of just figure out what to set equal to each other or what to do. But this one's very open-ended where you have to kind of interpret what's going on here. So they're giving you A to B. That's the whole diameter. That's the diameter going all the way across. Uh, so what does that make like this piece right here? That's 8. So the radius is 8, right, because you take the whole diameter and split in half. That number is actually important. We're going to use that here in a second. Um, now the xy being 5, this whole thing is 5, that means um, if, if you actually do have it perpendicular here, where it's actually at a perfect 90 degrees, you can actually split xy in half. So that means this would be 2.5 and this would be 2.5. Like the y to z and x to z, they're both 2, two and a half. Which I know is really goofy. Like you can get decimals today. There's gonna be a few that have decimals. Uh, but how we like use this stuff, like what we're doing here, we're trying to find this stick right here. Okay. Um, so um, how you're actually what you need to do here is you need to move this eight into a spot where it makes a triangle. So I'm gonna like move this arm like a hand on a cloth so it's here. That's a radius. And now you can do the Pythagorean theorem. Because now you have a right triangle there, which is this one, where this is 2.5, this is the 8, and you're trying to find that piece, which is the x to z, or sorry, c to z part. Does everyone see like how I did that? It's very like that is way more challenging than the last one. Like you have to like interpret a ton of stuff and like put it together. Like they didn't explicitly tell you this is what you need to do. Like you have to like figure it out. Uh, but again, the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. You're going to be using this quite a few times in your homework. Uh, again, it only works for right triangles, so it's perfect for like these because they do have right angles in them. Um, but a and b are always the smaller walls. They always touch the 90 degree marker. So like on this picture, this is a and b, and I don't care which one's which. This is the c number. The c is always the hypotenuse. That's just how I know it. So uh, x squared plus the 2.5 squared equals the 8 squared. So that's x squared plus, I have no idea what that is. What is, what is 4 and a half? Say it again? 6, oh wait. 6.275. Say it again? 6.2.75. 6. Sorry, 62.75. Oh. 2.5 squared? I got 2.5 oh. and 6.25. Okay, yeah. I was going to say, that seemed like way too big. Oh, I'll uh, have a different part of the problem. Okay, all right. All right. Uh, 8 squared is 64. Subtract that across. And if we subtract that, that across, 62. that's, say it again? 62.75. That's what I was going to say. Or did, we, did I do math wrong here? Did I do That's what I got that. that should be correct, correct? Yeah. Like I'm not okay. It was get, making me a little worried. Um, all right. Um, taking the square to the other side, and you get some weird number here. The square root of fifty-seven point seven five. Square remember square roots because that's how you get rid of a power. You don't divide. It's a power you take the square root. Um, it's, you're trying to think of what number multiplies on itself that gives you the fifty-seven. It's got to be like a nice number. Well, this is going to be a decimal. It's crazy. So 57 is in between 7 and 8. 7 times 7 is 49. 8 times 8 is 64. So it's in between there. So um, if I was thinking about it, I'd probably say it's probably like 7 and a half, 7.6. What do we got? 7.59. 7.59. Okay. And that made sense. Because again, 7 times 7 is is 49, 8 times 8 is 64. So it had to be some weird decimal between there to make the 57. But that, that number should make sense. That's this number right here, 7.59. That means, no, this picture is not on scale. That means this chunk that's right over here, like this piece, is super small. 
super small. It's what, 0 0.41, whatever that length is, because this whole length is eight, so, and this has to be eight, so this has to be like 0 0.41, so that it adds with this to make a total of eight. So it's really tiny. Like they're not drawn to scale by any means. So don't like try to read into that, because that acts, like on my picture, the X looks way smaller than 2.5. You know it's not. All right, questions on the whole Pythagorean theorem idea. Definitely different difficulty. Did we forgot the whole 62 thing. Yeah, I just wrote down 69 to 64. Oh, <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, good. All right, I was wondering how we were getting those numbers. Okay, we're good though. All right, let's move on. Let's go to the next style of problem. Again, this I feel like this is the one that's probably going to challenge the most people, just because you have to kind of figure out what to do, what to plug in, if it's a right triangle or not, which numbers go where. Remember, the hypotenuse is always that one that's by itself. The other two should be the ones that touch the 90. That's one. That's what you have to know. Or Yeah. We're going to have these in the homework card. Right? Yeah. Okay, which one? Which of the bottom answers do you want? Uh, preferably, I want both. So, like, I want to see that, and I want to see that next to it. Okay. That way, because the book will have, I think that they always have the square roots, but I do want both, just because you're interpreting what you're doing. You do need a calculator for that, so keep that in mind. We have, like, x equals uh, 57 plus 75, then do another equals 100 x. Yeah, so. just put it right there. So okay. Yeah. okay, questions at all? Does anyone see that? Good. All right, let's move on to the next one. Same, same exact idea. Goal today was to talk about one of our... Uh, one of the uh, Sokotoa problems, which I'm not assigning any of those um, in the homework, I'm, but I do want to talk about it because I don't want it to go away. You can use Sokotoa on these types of problems to actually figure it out. And so we're going to get to one of those. That'll be like my last problem today. It's one of the last slides I want to talk about, even though it's not important. So, but it is important that we need to know how to do it because it will be on the semester test. So, as you need to know the Sokotoa. So, I, I want to keep going on that so you don't forget it. Uh, all right, 10 4. This is one of the new ones we did on Friday. Talked about a perpendicular bisector. So a line that is perpendicular and it bisects a chord into two halves. If that's true, it had to be the diameter. It's the same exact problem we just did a little bit ago. Same exact problem. Um, now, the only, the only thing I want to bring up on this one is what, what would happen to the actual arc itself. So I'm just going to make up a kind of an easy problem that they, that they throw at you. Um, but again, same exact idea. So you have, you have a chord that is perpendicular to the line. Then what they're saying is that this line has to be the diameter. That's the only way that this can work where it splits these two in half. Well, there was one problem in the book. It had something very similar to, it said something like 64 degrees, 64 degrees. It had like 3x plus 7 and 4x plus 1. And it wanted you to solve this. Okay, it wanted you to find x, find the length of, uh, let's call this, Called a Z, like we had earlier. Uh, they wanted you to find the length of X Z, like find the actual length of it, a stick. Well, by looking at this problem and look at this directions and what we had in the last theorem, um, that if if you have like a diameter that's perpendicular to a chord, it splits the chord into two equal parts, and it splits the arcs into two equal parts. So, like by looking at this picture, you can definitely tell the arcs are the same measure, like they have the same 64 degrees. So that means the two chords are the same as well. So that 3x plus 7 has to be equal to the 4x plus 1. Like, that's, it, like it has to work that way. So then you can subtract this over, subtract this over. Uh, so that's 3x minus the 4x. That's the 1 minus the 7. So you get negative 1x, you get negative 6. So it looks like my x is a 6. You need to divide by negative 1. Now what do I need to do with the 6? Plug it back in. And you have to plug it back in because the whole point of this was to figure out this stick right here. Figure out how long it was. X to Z. Uh, so you plug in the 6 here. So 3 times 6, and then you add the 7 to it. So 25, something like that. 18 plus 7, 25. Alright, but again. You had to kind of interpret from the, the picture, but if you saw those arcs are the same, then the chords had to be the same, like those two parts had to be, and vice versa. Like maybe the, the two chords are the same, so the arcs would have to be equal, and that's the measures of them. 
But again, we'll come back to this same style picture in the last cycle. So I want to talk about a soaking toilet type of problem. Okay, questions, comments, anything that we need? Perfect. All right. Last theorem that I had today. Last theorem, and I know for a fact that there's a few problems in the homework that use this last theorem. That's the one we talked about on Friday. It was theorem 10.5. There's a picture. It talked about uh, chords being equal spaced from the center. All right, so chords equally spaced from the center. Um, and so there's two style of problems that they have. They're pretty basic. Uh, but how, how we know this, let's say that this stick is 10. This is 10. Like, and I'm talking about like the whole length here is 10. This whole length is 10. Um, and then they had, you know, a a 4w plus 5 and a um, 8w plus uh, 1. You know, they kind of weird stuff here. And they want to know what w is. Maybe that's what they want. They find the value of the variable. Well, what this theorem states is that if the chords are the same length, it's because they're the same distance from the center. So that means these two pieces would have to be equal to each other. They would have to be the same number. Right? Uh, and vice versa, if you knew that these were equal, then the sticks out here, the whole stick, would have to be the same. So I'll kind of walk you through two different problems that they could ask for. But how, I, how am I going to attempt this problem? You'd have to set 4w plus 5 equals, uh, it's going to equal the 8w plus 1, and then solve, subtract, subtract. You get 4w, you get negative 4 over here, you divide, you get negative 1, and then plug it back in and solve. All right, questions, comments about what we can do? Question. I'm confused how you know the 4w plus 5 is equal to the 8w plus 1. Just because on this one, um, two chords are equal if and only if they're equal distant from the center. So like this whole stick was 10, that whole stick was 10, so that forced these two sticks to be the same, because that's what it says here. They had to be equal distance from the center. Yeah. And if I ever actually plug that negative 1 in there um, for W, I think that's negative 1, right? Actually, it'd be 1, wouldn't it? If I do my math wrong, that should be negative. So it'd be 1. Sorry. There. So it'd be 1. So then you can plug it back in and solve. So it looks like each of those sticks. So each, so if I were to plug one back in, these are both nines, so. All right, now, that I said earlier that there's a different style problem you could do here, because they could ask for, I know like one of the problems that from previous, previous years, it was something like, they gave me like this is, say this is, uh, let's say this is five, and this is five, this is a, 8x plus 2, and this is a 4x um, plus 1, something like that. And it wanted to know like the length of this stick right here, that stick, fx. And again, I'm making up random numbers, so these are going to be decimals. But uh, it wanted to know what that number is. So the trick was you could find x uh, because you could set the two chords equal to each other. Because they're the same distance from the center, so the, the chords would have to be the same length, the entire sticks. Because that's what this theorem states, that chords are equal because they're equal distance. So 8x plus 2 is equal to the 4x plus 1. You can solve, subtract, subtract, blah, 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 blah. You plug it back in. And whatever that number is, and again, I made these up, but let's say x, and, um, you solve this, this is 4x, this is a negative 1, and you get x is a negative 1 fourth, fine, dandy. All right, then you can plug it back in and actually solve. Uh, and again, I made up terrible numbers, but whatever you get when you plug it back in. Let's say you plug it back in, I'm making this up. Let's say this whole thing turned out to be 10. Or no, let's go 11. So the whole thing turned out to be 11, it's not. When you plug it back in. Well, then this would have to be five and a half. And I'm thinking, or how do you know that? How did you know it was 5.5? Because do you agree there's a right angle at that chord? The first thing we did said, if you have a right angle from the center to the outside, like a radius, uh, it splits the chord into two equal halves. So you have to think about it. You can like mix some of the theorems together. So having the right angle here splits this thing into two equal parts. 
So you can do it that way as well. And again, I made up terrible numbers, but you get the idea. Okay. They're not overly difficult. It's not like that weird one where you have to figure out the Pythagorean theorem and stuff. Like these are pretty straightforward. You're just setting certain pieces equal to each other. But um, the one problem I do want to talk about today, this is probably my last example of the day, was a um, a Sokotoa type of problem. And I didn't have any didn't have any diagrams of this. I just wanted to talk about something you could do here. Okay, here's my circle. Say we have, a, we have a radius and a chord. Um, let's say this angle is, uh, let's call this from A to B to C, and let's call this D and E. All right. And so the idea was that um, maybe maybe they told me that this angle here is, I don't know, let's say it's 40 degrees. Okay. Um, and then this stick down here is eight inches. The question they could ask for, they could ask for pretty much any stick length. They could ask me for AE, they could ask me for DE, EB, but the question I want is I want to know what the length of A to D is. The radius of the circle. I want to know what AD is. Okay. And, I, and I thought this was kind of an interesting problem. Um, they didn't, um, I'm not assigning any of these in the book. I kind of avoided them just for right now because I want a little more practice with it before we get to it. Um, this this style problem goes off of what um, Haley asked earlier about that whole, like, why do they label that 40 on the outside? It seems a little weird. Because that 40 is this central angle right here. The angle at the center is the same as the how they label the arc. It's just kind of a weird label. Um, and why this is important is because Knowing this, that this is perpendicular, and that's the center of the circle, then this 8 would transfer up here because the chord would be split into two equal halves. So 8 and 8. And now I can figure out that length. Because you can use, you can use Sokotoa, like the, the trig functions, to actually help you out. Um, in fact, let me just draw the triangle that we're actually dealing with here. That's a terrible dream. This is 8, this is the 40, and I want to know that piece right there. Well, Sokotoa used, um, is used for right triangles, that is a right triangle, where you have an angle and at least one wall. Perfect. Boom. That's what we have here. Right? It's not Pythagorean theorem because I don't have two out of the three walls. I only have one wall given to me, I have the 8. But I can actually figure this out. So labeling this, this is my angle. This wall would be known as the opposite because it's straight across. This wall is the adjacent, because it's, it's, it's next to, adjacent is next to your angle. And the biggest wall, which would be the hypotenuse, the hypotenuse never changes. You should always get the hypotenuse right. The hypotenuse is the one wall that doesn't touch 90. So in this picture, by labeling those parts, and it looks like I'm not even using the adjacent wall, I don't even need it, um, because they don't have any numbers, they don't even have any letters down there, so I don't even need that. Um, it looks like these are the letters I'm using, so hypotenuse, right? Um, so if I'm thinking about Sokotoa, Sokotoa, these are the trig functions on your calculator. I'm going to use one of those acronyms, and the one acronym I'm going to use uses these letters, O and H. So which one has O and H in it? So. Yeah, this one. That's, that's why I know which one to pick. Because the label on the triangle gives me the right letters. That's why you have to, there's always three words. Adjacent, opposite, and hypotenuse. You've got to know where to put them from where your angle sits. So opposite's always straight across, wherever the angle sits. So if the angle's up here, opposite's down here. Um, the hypotenuse is always the big wall. You shouldn't get that one wrong. And the adjacent's always next to your angle. Um, so picking that one, question. How did you know to pick hypotenuse instead of adjacent? Um, because they're, um, they want me to find the hypotenuse. Um, I'm not picking adjacent. There's no numbers or letters down there. It, it maybe if the problem asked me to find DE, then yeah, I'd have to use the adjacent wall on this point. So kind of, I, I just kind of look at where the numbers sit. So kind of knowing which one to pick. 
Um, but I'm using that one. This one stands for sine of your angle, sine of 40 degrees. Um, opposite wall is 8, so the O goes on the top, and then the H goes on the bottom. Because the second letter goes on the top, third letter goes on the bottom. That's how it always works in the formula. Um, and it's always the trig function with the angle after it. So if I was using the, this one, it'd be cosine of your angle, or tangent of the angle, and then the letters after it go on the back. Now, what we talked about you know, back in chapter 8 and chapter 4 was how do you solve that? Yeah, exactly. If the X is ever on the bottom, like what we have here, you do that little switcheroo thing, that's what we talked about, where you switch and you write it like this in your calculator. Like that's how you type it, because the X is on the bottom, so you have to do a little switcheroo. So the X is by itself. If the X is on the top, then you do the little thing where you multiply the number from the bottom over. So like, if you ever had a problem like, let's say, I'm just going to make this up, let's say you're doing a tangent problem, okay, but the X is on the top, fine. Then if the X is on the top, you don't have to do a little switcheroo, you just multiply this number over. So whatever it is, maybe it's sine, maybe it's, maybe it's cosine, I don't know what trig function is, but if the X is on the top, you just multiply the number across, then this is what you type in. But for mine, that's what I'm typing in. I'm typing 8 divided by, and then typing in sine of 40. And if I actually type this in my calculator, See, do I have a calculator up here anywhere? Mm, where's my calculator at? Perfect. All right, here's my calculator. So if I'm typing this in, I'm typing in 8 divided by sine of 40. I get 12. So this turned out to be 12.45. And that'd be what inches or whatever this level was. And that makes sense. The hypotenuse should be the biggest wall of that triangle. So it had to be bigger than 8. I knew that. So 12 makes sense, it's in the ballpark. But again, how I typed it in, I typed in 8, hit the division sign, this is what we're doing, then typed in sine 40 and hit enter on the calculator. And again, why I'm bringing this up, because I'm not assigning these on the homework. Why I'm bringing it up is because before we get to the semester test at the end of the year, we should review this stuff. So I'm going to try to do this more and more where we bring up the trig functions and stuff so you know how to do them. There's going to be days where maybe this is all we work with. So you get better at it again. So you're not forgetting it. Because it is important. It is easy to kind of work with once you know how to do it. Okay, questions, comments about it? Okay. You're going to still need it though. All right, here's your... Here's your homework. Um, tentatively, I have it due for Wednesday this week. We'll kind of see the time frame. It's not difficult by any means. There's no simple programs or anything. There's just a couple segment theorem. A lot of them are just simple algebra. Um, it's page 718, 1 through 14, and 16 through 19. So I just throw out one problem through number 15. So pretty, pretty basic. You're just finding x's a lot of the times, so just doing some simple algebra. Taking you back to algebra one days, but you got to know which parts of the set equal to each other. Um, you have to know like what the arcs are, what circles add up to be, all that good stuff. So, all right, rest time is yours. You have about seven minutes here, uneven.